Good day grade 9 learners and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. I will be guiding you through the financial literacy component of grade 9 EMS and today I will be guiding you through the first lesson of a six lesson series of grade 9 EMS term 1. My name is Nkos Nati Koji and this is my Tumamina Teaching. In grade 8 you learned all about bookkeeping for a service business. A service business is a business that receives income by providing a service. For example, a hairdresser obtains income by cutting hair or a taxi driver by getting you from point A to point B would also be an example of a service business. In grade 9, we will deal with trading businesses. This is a business that generates income by selling goods such as flowers, cakes or maybe even clothing. Another name for a trading business is a retail business. A trading business buys goods at a certain price and sells them at a higher price. The owner decides before the time what profit percentage he or she would like to earn. The profit earned must be enough to cover all the costs such as the cost price and to pay all the other necessary expenses. The amount remaining after deducting the expenses and the cost price is the profit. The profit percentage is also referred to as the profit markup. In grade 8, we covered source documents. The following source documents are used to record cash transactions in a trading business. Duplicate receipt to record cash received, electronic fund transfers or EFT reference number to record cash payments, cash register role to record cash sales. As you already know, accounting is a subject that you need to understand rather than learning the theory by heart. But the following rules or principles are very, very important. You should know what an asset, owner's equity, and what liabilities are. And you should know the different types of assets, income, expenses, and liabilities. Let's look at this table very quickly. Okay, we're going to put a few examples on the screen and you have to identify whether it's an asset, a liability or owner's equity. Remember when the answer is owner's equity, you still have to specify if it's a drawing, an expense, an income or even capital. You ready? 3, 2, 1, let's go. Number 1. Water and electricity. Well, that is under owner's equity, specifically expenses. Number two, vehicles. That's under assets. Number three, trading stock. That is also under assets. Number four, a loan. Yes, a loan is a liability. And the last one, number five, capital. Indeed, it's an owner's equity under capital. Can you remember the accounting equation that we did in grade 8? Assets equal to owner's equity plus liabilities. This equation needs to balance at all times, meaning the value at the left-hand side of the equation needs to match the right-hand side of the equation. We will look at the accounting equation in more detail later on in the series, but for now, Let's look at a few accounting principles. Let's just quickly recap. This is called a T account. On the left hand side, we have the debit side. On the right hand side, we have the credit side. Assets increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. Liabilities on the other hand, increases at the credit side and decreases at the 
debit side. Owner's equity is a bit different. Capital and income both increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. Whereas drawings and expenses or losses increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. Okay, so I know this is a lot to take in, but I've made this a bit easier for you. We're going to use this following acronym to remember those accounting principles. DAO, LIC. The D stands for drawings. A for assets, L for the losses. And on the other side, another L that stands for liabilities, I for income, and lastly, C for capital. So what does this mean? DAL is for the accounts that increase on the debit side, then decrease on the credit side. And LIC is for the accounts that increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. I hope that acronym will help you remember these very important accounting principles. Next, I will be explaining to you how to calculate the cost price, the profit markup, the selling price of a trading business. Firstly, we must understand what these three terms mean. Cost price is the price that you bought the goods for, thus the purchase price. Profit margin will be the percentage you will add to the cost price. And selling price is the price which you are going to sell the product to your customers. So the cost price plus the profit margin equals the selling price. I always use a grid to make these calculations easier. We will put them as percentages because the profit margin is a percentage. There is a very important rule that you must remember. We always start with a hundred percent. So the cost price will always be a hundred percent. For example, if a business has a profit margin of 30 percent, what will the selling percentage be? Use this formula. Cost price plus profit margin equals to the selling price. So 100% plus 30% equals to 130%. Okay, now it's your turn. What will the selling price be if the profit margin is 50%? Let's see. So firstly, we must remember that the cost price is always 100%. Then plus the 50% of the profit margin, that equals to 150%, which is the selling price. Let's look at the calculation of cost of sale. Calculate the cost of sales if the profit markup is 25% and the selling price is 4,000 Rand. The first thing you should do is to draw your grid. Then insert all the known information in the grid. For example, you know that the cost price is always 100%. You know that the profit markup is 25%. Then you also know to calculate the selling price percentage, you should have 100% plus 25%, which is 125%. You also know that the selling price is 4,000 Rand. The question is, what is the cost of sale? This easily formula will help you to calculate this question. You should always take the unknown and divide it by the known. So in this example, you take 100%, which is the unknown, and divide it by the 125%, which is the known. So... 4,000 Rand times 100 divided by 125 equals to 3,200 Rand. So 3,200 Rand is the cost of sale. Okay, next up, we will calculate the selling price. Example, calculate the selling price if the profit markup is 50% and the cost price is 2,000 Rand. As before, you should first start with drawing the grid and putting all the known information within the grid. So again, we know that the cost price percentage is 100%. You know that the profit markup is 50%. Then you also know how to calculate the selling price percentage 
which is 100% plus 50%, which equals to 150%. And that is the selling price percentage. You also know the cost price, which is 2000 Rand. The question is, what is the selling price? Remember, you should always take the unknown and divide it by the known. So you should take the 150%, which is the unknown, and divide it by the 100%, which is the known. So it's 2000 Rand times 150 divided by 100, which is equal to 3000 Rand. And that is the selling price. Lastly, we need to understand and know how to calculate the profit markup. The formula to calculate the profit is selling price minus the cost price, which will give you the profit. And the formula for the profit markup percentage, remember, you need to know this off by heart. It is profit divided by cost of sale times 100 divided by 1. That is the profit markup percentage. So let's go over to an example. A business buys goods for 9,000 Rand and sells them for 13,500 Rand. What will the profit markup and profit markup percentage be? First, calculate the profit. That is 13,500 Rand minus 9,000 Rand. That equals to 4,500 Rand. And then the profit markup percentage is, remember, the profit markup percentage equation is profit divided by cost of sales times 100 divided by 1. So in this case, it's 4,500 Rand divided by 9,000 Rand times 100 divided by 1. That is equal to 50%. This means the owner makes a 50% profit. That's all for today, grade 9s. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at cash transactions for a trading business. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. These lessons are very costly for us to produce, but we are very determined to keep it free for everyone. We produce these lessons at the rate at which it gets funded. So here are three ways to join hands with us to keep it free for all South African learners. First off, share our resources so that more people can benefit. Secondly, you can add us on my school as a beneficiary. This will help us immensely. Thirdly, we give Section 18A certificates, so your contribution will have a tax benefit. So let's join hands and collaborate for free quality education for all South Africans.